Good morning and welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. This is Photography Weekly, episode number 47, for Sunday, February 27th, 2012. Coming up in today's show, light modifiers and how you can control your light. Now that we did a lot of lighting pictures, let's see how we can actually use light modifiers to control the light and the amount of light that we're using. Also, we're going to have a lesson in flash photography from a friendly source. And we're going to have this week's tribute to our light uh, pictures. And then I will give you this week's assignment. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started this week with episode number 47. And that's it. Let's get started with learning. You know, that's what the old uh, intro always says. And uh, we are going to start with learning as soon as we uh, pick up and do some official shout-outs here this morning to everybody. And uh, thanks for all that of those that could hang out last night that did. Uh, we had a very successful um, show last night. So at one part, because I tried to teach something about photography and it didn't go over too big, so we stopped it. Uh, we moved it to actually uh, this venue. So those of you that was there last night are going to re-see some of that today. Uh, but those of you who were not there last night, it'll be brand new to you. So um, we'll be showing that here in a little while. Other than that, uh, some great, great uh, photography going on in our Facebook group this week. I was really impressed with all the lighting uh, pictures we received. There's a ton of them, I know, because I downloaded them this morning so I can create the tribute to uh, this week's lesson. With that said, let's go ahead and we're going to do our official shout outs. Uh, do not be afraid to keep the chat room going. If you're not in the chat room, please come join us at live.jackstechcorner.com. Uh, we'd love to have you in there and uh, chat with everybody in the group. As uh, as the lessons are going on, you can continue to chat in there. I am going to open up Skype this morning for your questions, so get those rolling in your head. Start thinking, like, what can I ask? Um, you know, they always tell me, that there's no uh, stupid question. The only stupid question is one you don't ask. And believe me, there's a lot of people out there thinking the same thing you are. So we need to uh, uh, get those calls in here and get those questions. And if I can't answer them, I guarantee somebody in the chat room will answer those. Okay, for the official shout-outs this morning, good morning to Cheryl, Andy Taylor, Debbie, Dennis, Hugh, Jake, Jessica, Jody, June, Kevin, Mary Jo, Mike, and Vicky. Uh, that's like our standard uh, Sunday group in there. I tell you, you guys are uh, been around here probably as long as I have. Uh, so, and what would I say we're into now is the forty seventh show. So that's pretty good. Forty seven episodes. That's forty seven weeks. So uh, soon we'll have a whole year under our belt, and uh, we'll be ready to go. So today I wanted to first start off talking about um, light modifiers. Now. I know, and as I was doing these, uh, this actually tutorial, when I was setting this thing up, I thought, now, not everybody has these light modifiers, but what I want to do is be able to, I think I did it where it's going to introduce you to the light modifier. And maybe it's going to help you know what you're going to need to buy uh, in the future, maybe what you want to buy, or maybe it's even going to show you and you'll say, yeah, I don't need to buy that. Uh, I'm not, I don't want that. Hopefully this uh, tutorial is going to help you out with that. It's called light modifiers. And uh, then we're going to go right into flash photography uh, and some better ways to use your flash. So the way I did the light modifier that I could tell you straight off uh, right now, it's actually a video of me. Instead of, I know last week we did a live uh, segment. This week I thought for less chaos in the room here as I'm, as I'm broadcasting, I pre-recorded uh, this segment. So what's going to happen is as it's going on, if you have questions, I'm going to be closely following the chat room when it's playing uh, so you can watch it and uh, we can chat together in the chat room. I won't talk through it, so uh, you'll, you'll keep my uh, my big uh, voice off of there. So, so uh, with that said, let's go ahead and get started right into our light modifiers and I'll show you about those and then I'll come back. We'll open Skype up too and I'll take your questions there. So let's get started. Oh, 
Oh, hello there. Hey, caught me here working on some lights. Welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. I'm your host, Jack, and this uh, video, I thought I would invite you into my studio once again. And today we're going to look at light modifiers. Now, there's probably as many light modifiers out there, or what, does, uh, what there are lights. I've even seen some light modifiers homemade. But today we're going to stick more to the light modifiers that actually are store purchased. Um, and we're going to go from pretty much the least expensive to the most expensive I have. And I don't have a lot of light modifiers, but I have a few. And then what I thought I would do is take some pictures in between um, after setting the light uh, modifier up and show you exactly how the light is affecting the portrait. So, so that's where I thought we would go ahead and start. And what we're going to be using today is our studio strobe. And I know a lot of you out there may not have these, but this is just the easiest way I can show you uh, my particular light modifiers because I don't have a uh, soft box, and we'll get to that for a minute, uh, from my speed light just yet. That is on my uh, very short list uh, to purchase. So I'm going to use my studio strobe here. And I'm going to show you these lights um, in the order from cheapest to the most expensive. And uh, we'll show you how they work. So, let's go ahead and get started. Okay. The first light modifier that I want to share with you is just a simple white umbrella. This is the lowest cost uh, light modifier you can purchase. And I have used these out in the field also with my speed light. As you've seen in my uh, strobist video a while back. Uh, not recently because we had a lot of trouble with wind. This outside wind, not a good combination. But in the studio, you don't have that much trouble. And I was reading somewhere that photographers are the only ones that are allowed to open up umbrellas in the house without having to worry about bad luck. So it opens up, as you can see, you can see basically through it, or light can travel through it. So the way this works as a light modifier, it can either be, light can be bounced into it to make a nice wide pattern, or the light can be, take, the light can be shot through the umbrella to soften it, much like a softbox, but a lot cheaper, but still it's a very wide light. And, and I'll show you the difference in the shots with the softbox and the wider lights. So. To put this on our strobe here, and I'm going to raise the strobe up a little bit to make sure you can see it okay. And folks, these strobes here, you know, you've probably seen when I bought these a while back. They are inexpensive strobes. And uh, the whole set's like 300 bucks. You get three strobes and umbrellas and all kinds of stuff, so it's really worth it. What we're going to do first with the first couple test shots is we are going to shoot into the umbrella. And the way to test your umbrella, and you probably won't be able to see this on camera, is when you turn your umbrella up when you're shooting into it, like this as a light modifier, you turn your light on. When you open this up, you should not see any light casting on the ceiling. If you do, just bring it back until there's no light on the ceiling. Because what you're doing then is you're throwing contaminated light into your into your photo. You don't want to do that. So you want to tighten it up, and now we're ready to go ahead and shoot right into this and actually bring the light out over. Okay, just like that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually switch over here with this same camera I'm using to uh, video this, and we're going to switch over now. And I'm going to take some test shots with uh, my, my single strobe with this single umbrella facing this way and I'll show you exactly what those shots look like now and then uh, when I come back we're going to flip it around and I'll show you how to shoot through it and what the difference that makes so let's go ahead and get a couple test shots The next thing you're going to see here is we turn the umbrella around and now we're shooting through the umbrella. That's shooting through it. You can see this. 
And what that does basically is it softens the light down a little bit. Okay? Now, what it also does, and people don't realize this, when you have the umbrella facing this way, and your subject is over here, you have that nice wide source. But what people don't realize what happens is, and please remember this when you're doing this, is it's so easy to uh, not notice. When you take this and you flip it around this way, all of a sudden your light source becomes closer to your subject. So you either have to lower your power down a little bit on your strobe, or you can actually raise your aperture up by a couple stops. Now remember with aperture, every stop, every F stop, is one stop of light. So you'll see one stop of difference with every uh, aperture setting, with every increased number. So there we go. Remember, aperture is the bigger circle, the bigger lens opening, basically. And the higher the number goes, the smaller the hole gets. So we're trying to capture less light. Okay, so let's take a couple quick shots that way, and uh, we'll come back with our next light modifier. Okay, folks, our next light modifier is another umbrella, but this umbrella is black on the outside, and it doesn't allow you to shoot through it. But what it does allow you to do, it allows you to get a much brighter light source because it has a reflective inside. So the white kind of hits it and you get some reflective, but you're going to get a lot of reflective light off of this. So again, you might want to lower your f-stop down. You know, mice also want to make sure your strobe power, most time on my strobes I use at low power. Um, and that's a couple of things and basically is why that is, one, I don't need a whole lot of light in my small studio setting. If you do, I mean, we have the power. These are uh, 300 watt lights, so we have plenty of power if we need more power. But the low setting also allows it to recycle very quickly, so you're shooting very, very rapidly. So we're, to put this light, to put this uh, modifier on again, it goes in your umbrella holder. Well, as soon as you get to turn your light on, and again, this one gets turned up. try to turn this up a little bit and again you don't want any light hitting the ceiling from your umbrella so pull it back a little bit tighten it down and the way this works is it's going to modify it by shooting the light out so you get a big wide pattern we're going to take a couple shots with this light modifier and show you how that looks The next light modifier we're going to go ahead and talk about now is the um, the crown jewel of light modifiers, I guess. If you talk to photographers, that's what they most of them say. Um, you have to have a lot of nerves of steel when you buy these things, especially if you buy one like this. I'm going to show you why. But uh, this is a soft box. This is how they come. Uh, this also came with the kit with the strobes. So if you're looking for a, a nice kit with a lot of uh, accessories, uh, this newer kit I bought it from Amazon probably seen the unboxing video uh, it's, it's it's worth it because it has a lot of startup gear that you're going to be using now the way I, reason I said you have to be strong at heart is because you got to put a softbox together and not all of them really like to act properly uh, when you're trying to do this this is called a speed ring this goes right on here on your lights uh, of course if you open it up a little bit And all these are just uh, little um, thumb screws, basically is all that is. They just get loosened up. Then they just slide right on here. Yeah, once you get them loosened up enough. And I'll show you that again in a minute when we go to put this thing together here. Okay, maybe you need to take them all the way back in there. Come 
make sure they're all the way back in, in the bottom there. And then it just slides right on there, so that's how that goes on. It's called a speed ring. The next part of our soft box that we have to worry about is these. I call these the paint in the butt rods. Okay, that's just the only way I can explain it to you, the paint in the butt rods. Because these things are either going to be uh, really cooperative to you, or they're going to be really, really hard to get your softbox built because these don't bend too much. And they can't because the softbox has to be uh, kind of firm, right, when it, when it opens up. Next item is the softbox. Right here is the actual softbox itself. And it's again, it's the reflective material inside, like that umbrella was. And in these, the light actually gets pushed around in here. And then the softbox, or the diffusers on the outside with Velcro, is the white piece. And then you can shoot your uh, strobe through this and actually have a nice focused light. Where the umbrella puts it, pushes it more around the room, this is more of a focused light based on the size of the softbox. So we're going to attempt to put this together. There is one other piece here I'll show you. This is the actual diffuser itself, the white piece. And you've seen soft boxes before. If you go to B&H Photo Video or other places, Amazon, you'll see what a soft box looks like. Uh, but you're going to see one live here in just a minute. And I hope we can uh, get this together before I run out of footage here. Now on your soft box itself, I don't know if you can see this or not. There are two sides. Oops. There are two sides with Velcro like this. Those are your last two sides. Your first two sides you want to use are the sewn insides. If you can see that. The sewn insides. Hopefully this video turns out okay. So you put your speed ring in like so. place for your rods to sit for right now. Put your speed ring in. This one actually has uh, kind of, I don't know what I'd call this back part here, like cheater velcro where I can put this together in the back. And it makes it a little easier because it gives you a little room to wiggle in the back. Um, I put one of these together and it was so tight that we actually ripped one of the velcros out of it. Uh, so you have to be careful when you put them together. And you know, you gotta realize too, this is a new, brand new soft box. I mean, I haven't used this one yet uh, in the studio. I've used my other one, but not this one. And we're gonna put this in here, kind of like that. Get your screws through there. Then you line your rods up with where the Velcros are. I'm going to put it on the floor here. You may not be able to see this. We'll show you the finished product. So there is our soft box. You see the speed ring is out on the back, so we can put the screws on. And the softbox itself. So that's the softbox. What I like to do now is I like to mount it before I put my um, diffuser panel on. So I'm going to go ahead and mount it on here now. So make sure your light is tight so it doesn't fall down. Make sure your softbox is squared up and then just turn in your thumb screws. Only a snuggle tip. You don't have to make these real tight, folks. You don't got to make these so tight that like they break all your plastic off in there. You just want to make it tight enough where it's snug and it doesn't want to fall off your your light itself. So now you can see the light on there. And I've seen guys use these without the panels. Um, you see it's pretty bright in there. 
If we uh, test fire it, you can see how bright that is. So it's pretty doggone bright. So what we're going to do now is we're going to turn this off. And we're going to go ahead and put our diffusing panel on. And these are fairly easy because it's just plastic on there. So it's pretty easy to do. And they also come, I'll just show you this because you're probably going to get one of these with yours. They also come with one of these too, and this is just uh, known as a baffle. It's just known as a baffle. It clips inside if you want to use it. That's what it's for. And what it does is actually um, turns the light down even a little bit more. This actually just clips right into these little things here. Sometimes they're Velcro. There's just little uh, straps in here these things hook into. And uh, they would just clip right in there. Some guys say don't use them. Sometimes I do. It all depends how much light you have. We're not going to take the time to put that in right now. Again, these are just Velcroed. They just Velcroed on there and they pull across. They go on very easily. It's not a big deal here. It is squared up with the box. Just pull that up. And just velcro that in. So now you see we have that big, nice uh, light source. It's very directional. You can see how it's much as toned down. If you test fire it now, you get a nice directional pattern now, is what that is. So we're going to go ahead and set this one uh, up here on the side and I'll take a couple test shots and, uh, and we'll get that going. So we're going to go ahead and uh, grab a couple test shots with this light and you'll see how, those, uh, how it actually modifies. Well folks, I hope you've enjoyed this little video on light modifiers and how you can take that light, even with one strobe, that's all we were shooting with uh, this, this morning here, even with one strobe light, and we are able to modify that light in, in a, a ton of different ways to uh, make it, you know, decent, like if you have an umbrella and you want to capture a wide group, you can use that umbrella and reflect it out over a wide group of people or even two. Soft boxes, the small soft box I showed you is mainly meant for one person. I have a larger soft box meant for two um, that I also use for uh, portrait shots. So there's a lot of different things you can do. We've also talked in our shows in the past, uh, if you've caught any of our uh, live shows, we've also talked about uh, flash modifiers. This is just simply a little uh, piece of plastic here. I'll show you that real quick. And it simply goes on your uh, speed light. And uh, this is just a different kind of modifier. Right? Instead of taking that light and shining it directly in somebody's eyes, we can actually take this light, um, because you don't want to shine it like in people's eyes like this, we can take this light and put that on and actually disperse the light and modify it. And they make all kinds of attachments for your speed light also. Um, but don't be too tricked. I know some folks out there have purchased the little soft boxes for these, and those are nice. To kind of, and what those are meant to do is kind of disperse the light a little bit, kind of uh, break the light up and uh, make a little bit wider pattern. Um, 
But for any true soft box work, uh, you're going to have to spend the money. And uh, like I said, I'm looking for one now for my strobe on a light stand uh, for about a hundred and a half. So um, that's on my short list to purchase. Actually, extra modifiers that you get with your lighting kit, if you buy this perfect kit I bought, you do get what's called a honeycomb. Um, it's okay, but uh, it really didn't do have a whole lot of effect for me. So I don't know if you'd use it or not, but it is in there. What I do seem to use more than not with my uh, backdrop here is um, this uh, barn door. And I often thought when before I got these, like, what would you ever use a barn door for? Well, I tell you what, if you want to take your light and modify it so you're shooting a backdrop, you just want to shoot up and nothing coming below the person, you can modify it that way. It'll black out the bottom and shoot the top, so it's really, really a neat uh, little gadget. And again, you can see it hooks just uh, with the speed ring also on the back. So, uh, you do kind of want to fold it up correctly so it uh, looks nice and lays right in your boxes. And they also get uh, sent, I didn't get them out, but they also sent uh, some colored gels, um, which uh, can be used naturally to throw color. So with the three different lights, you have a lot of different uh, possibilities here. And, you know, that's not the only light uh, you can use. But uh, strobes will give you a different type of uh, feel for your photography, for sure. Um, more than I started out with stationary lights, just static lighting. And that's okay, um, but you don't get the same feel as you get with strobes. It's, it's a different style of light, because it's a constant light. So, And uh, with the strobes, as you've seen, you can also turn on the modeling light and use a constant light if you wish. You can shut the strobe off and just use it as a constant modeling light. So there you have it. And you guys all understand and know that already, so that's very good. All right, well, it's great uh, that everybody picked up some information this morning from that uh, video. And there was just so much information. I had to do a lot of different cuts with that, uh, with wanting to take the pictures of myself um, with those lights. Now, also, you know, I have to throw out there, and it's, it's partly my fault when I do that stuff is. Thanks, Mike. Partly my fault when I do those videos. Um, I don't take enough time uh, with those shots to really show you but I think Jake pointed out with that soft box in the end what happens is um, it really really did soften the light down uh, you can see that the soft box actually becomes more directional uh, so as you get it closer to somebody you can actually power it down or raise your um, raise your f stops you know the higher the number the smaller the hole uh, with your aperture so um, the umbrellas we talked, Jessica didn't quite catch that when I was showing it in the video, but with the umbrella, when you're pushing that umbrella in, uh, the object is, is when it's turned up, you don't want any light casting out to, to the ceiling. So you want to capture all the light in the umbrella because then you're directing it where you want it to be. So that's exactly what that means. Um, so, and I'm just going through the chat room right now too. Uh, yeah, you know what, Jake, and you're right. Um, I wanted to do putting together a softbox video months ago, and um, sometimes you can't do that without cursing. So I would say please make sure your kids aren't in the room when you put your softbox together. Um, that's why the big one I have, I got a huge softbox I bought from that Cowboy Studio we talked about last week. And uh, it's together all the time because I had such a hard time putting it together. I just put it up on the shelf and leave it um, intact. So... Um, and Andy's putting a lot of good stuff in there. If you're following along in the chat room, he's talking about uh, using some um, lens tissue over the flash tube to change the colors. Uh, and the colors make a big difference. If you noticed, and you'll see today on our tribute to lighting, um, since uh, since I got yelled at last weekend by Jessica and said, I didn't see Jack's uh, assignment, I made sure to put uh, one of my pictures in there. And it is when I was using a color gel on a one of the strobes to fire it off the backdrop uh, because you see in the video that backdrop is gray but I can fire it any color and I can change the color of that backdrop just with a light with a lighting gel so it's pretty cool so uh, there you have that we are going to open up Skype and by looking at the chat room you guys should have a lot of questions you should have something in your head right now you should be asking about lighting um, that I can maybe help you with and we can definitely um, guide you in that right direction to uh, put you in there with the light 
and uh, help you. I mean, everybody took some beautiful lighting pictures this week. You're very, very creative, and uh, I was really impressed with it. So, uh, you know, I think it's your uh, your ability to detail. Um, and everything I've been reading, I've been studying a lot about light lately because light, hey guys, as a photographer, you know, light is your key uh, buddy and it's your key enemy at the same time. So we have to know how to control light, but we have to know how to see the light. I think that's more important. I read a book recently about seeing the light. And when you go out, here's some here's some key elements um, that I'm going to throw out there to you now without dragging this on too far. Whenever you're out anywhere, I notice now when I'm in a food court in a mall, um, when I see a building, look at it and look where the sun is falling. Look at the light. Uh, when people are walking by you in the daylight, look at them and notice the contour of their face because you have shadows and highlights. That's what photography is. Photography is not blasting a light in somebody's face and making them beautifully lit. And then they look like a, a porcelain doll or worse yet, I mean, they look like that cardboard face. So that's uh, that's key. So look at the light when you're out there. Um, you know, really look around. Uh, Jessica... I am putting a couple of cool pics from last night, but the sunset really killed me. Well, when you're shooting in a sunset, there's there's something you have to do there, and I'm going I'm going to do a video when it gets warmer. I took my daughter out one day to a lake, and we did some uh, dusk type sunset exposures. Here's what you do with with an exposure. I'll give you guys this tidbit of information. Uh, you can write it down, put it in your brain there somewhere, and keep it for later. Uh, and when I show you later, it's going to make more sense. Take your camera first, get the camera to set the exposure first with nobody in your frame. Okay, so take your subjects out and just stand where you're going to stand to take that picture and pull your camera up. Right, let's pull our camera up here. And we're going to look through it and we're going to, we're going to get our exposure basically for the sunset. All right, now what's going to happen is if you put that person back in front of it and you click that shutter, what's going to happen? You're right, you're already saying that. I can, I can hear you saying it. You're going to silhouette them is what's going to happen because there's no light coming from the camera. So you're exposed for that bright background and now they're going to be silhouetted. So what you do is turn your flash on, right? Even if you only have a pop-up flash, it's better than nothing um, and you may need it. So you can use your pop-up flash and then take that picture and what you're going to do then is leave it the same exposure. Don't re-expose for the people in front of you now, but your flash is going to operate as a fill flash. On the strobes, does it take a special attachment for the light stand? Jake, are you talking about the the studio strobes? I, I would think. And if you are, they have uh, the attachment on the bottom of it already. It just sits right on the light stand. And uh, it just screws down on top of that light stand is how that works. I'm just trying to see where that one actually uh, is it supposed to be from. Oh, hold on a minute. Let's see here. This is actually one I use for my backdrop light because you can see how small the stand is. But if you look right here, Hugh, if you can see that right here, this little wing nut just comes off. You just loosen this up and this pulls right off here, off the light stand. Uh, and the light stands come with that kit anyway. This one does not. This came with a uh, older set of lights I bought, this small stand. But you get all the regular size stands. Uh, this is a nice stand to use as a backdrop. And again, and again, I just use it that way and I shoot it right up there with my barn doors and I shoot the backdrop. So hopefully that helped you out a little bit, uh, Jake, and uh, now you understand. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead with the tribute. Let me bring that up. And uh, check this one out.
Okay, folks. Well, thank uh, thanks to each and every one of you out there for watching the show. I do appreciate it each and every Sunday morning. Uh, it's great that you come into uh, to my uh, studio here and you allow me to come into your house and your computer rooms and uh, help you along and teach as you teach me. I uh, definitely uh, can share some, my knowledge, whatever that knowledge may be with you. Uh, today we learned a lot about light modifiers, and I hope you can modify your light when you're doing your macros. You know, start putting all these skills together you're learning. Each week's assignment should be building upon each other, and you can pull those all together. So, as always, like we always say here, keep those shutters clicking, and soon you'll be seeing Kevin's 7, you know, I keep saying 7D, I think, yeah, it's 7D canon pictures so keep those shutters clicking keep the editors editing i'll see you back here next sunday for another jack's tech corner and photography weekly so long and take care